Hi, so uh, I'm, I'm a young engineer in the transportation industry, and the audience, you guys, are uh, engineers, students, investors, and just general public who are interested in looking at a sustainable point of view. Yeah? And basically the purpose of my talk is to encourage you to invest in the technology I'm going to propose. Can I begin? Right, so transportation. Transportation today is one of the most important systems that we have in place. Everything from getting your morning cup of coffee to coming to work or school on time relies heavily on the transportation industry. And over the past few decades, we've begun to realize that uh, our current transportation system isn't the best for the environment. We begin to realize that it has ill effects on the ecology. And recently, there's been a lot of talk on what is called sustainable transportation. So sustainable transportation is basically transportation that doesn't jeopardize the future of our planet. So uh, before I get into my product that I'm trying to uh, advocate today, let me just ask you a few questions. Have any of you traveled to Batam over here? Yeah? Or Bintan? Not that many? Okay. So how was the was your trip to Batam? Do you how do you get there? By ferry. By ferry. How was the ride? It was not very not, not, not very comfortable. Yeah. Okay. So generally Singapore to Batam takes about forty five minutes and uh, Singapore to Bintan a little longer, about an hour. And the, the seas around Singapore are generally calm, but still uh, ships experience a little bit of uh, shaking and those of us who aren't very used to it do get a little sick. So the product I'm going to propose today is going to help reduce the travel time by about half and it's going to be a much smoother travel experience without any of the seasickness. Presenting to you wing and ground effect vehicles. So wing and ground effect, or WIG for short, W-I-G, are basically a kind of boat, a special kind of boat. So like any other boat, it can float and move on the water, but what it can do that is unique is it can take off from the surface and glide over the water like an airplane. So a good way to think of this, an analogy, would be flying fish. So they're essentially marine creatures, you know, they're fish. They stay in the water, but when they want to, they can lift off from the surface, fly over the surface, and go back in, right? So similarly, these are boats, but they can fly over the surface and then go back to being a boat. So throughout my presentation, I'm going to be comparing them to boats and airplanes because they function as both. <coughs> so here's a short video that shows one big craft in action. Right? So you see that the small waves don't actually affect the motion that much. It's pretty stable. Okay? So sure, it looks cool, but why are, they, why are they really interesting? Two main reasons. Firstly, wig crafts are faster than any production boat today. A normal speed boat or a, a small yacht can do about 60 to 70 kilometers on a relatively calm sea, but a wig craft can easily do 120 to 140 kilometers per hour. It's almost twice as fast because it's flying through there. And this means that travel times are going to be half. Secondly, since we're talking about flying, these are much more fuel efficient than airplanes. So how is this possible? Let me give you a quick overview of the science of physics behind it. Uh, mainly two reasons. A wig craft has lo uh, lower drag and a higher lift. So what is this lift and drag? Let me explain. <clears throat> so here you have a wing that is moving through the air. right? And what happens is the physics of the flow around it make the pressure on the upper surface lower than the pressure below. So when you have a higher pressure below, it tends to push your wing upwards. So you have what is called a lift. Now let's see what happens to this lift when we have two, two wings, one flying through the air, and the other, we bring it close to a flat surface, like, like the sea or a ground surface. What happens is now the wing is essentially squeezing the air beneath it. And because of the squeezing effect, the lift becomes bigger. Right? So a wing craft has a bit more lift than a normal thing. Now let's talk about drag. Drag, as you've all experienced drag, you know, you just move your arm through the air, you feel the resistance of the air, that's drag. But, and it, it tries to slow down your hand. Now, for a wing, there are two kinds of drag. Something called skin drag, which is basically the particles of air rubbing past your wing, causing friction. And the second is a little more technical. It's something called induced drag. Induced drag is when, when you have a wing flowing, passing through the air, it creates tiny uh, tornadoes behind it. And these tornadoes tend to pull the wing backwards. 
and this pulling effect slows down the wing, and this is called induced drag. So now again comparing a wing moving through the air versus a wing close to a surface. So the skin drag says about, about the same, you know, the, the surface area, the friction is about the same. But these tiny tornadoes that I talked about, they can't fully form when you have a flat surface below your wing. So the tornadoes don't form and they can't pull your wing backwards anymore. So the induced drag, the EI, is much smaller in this case, making it more efficient. So now that we understand the basics of the physics behind it, let's talk about size, like how big can these things be, what can we make out of them. So this is a picture of uh, the craft that you saw some time ago. Okay, it's, uh, It has an automobile kind of engine, and it's actually by a Singaporean company called Widgetworks. But these things can be made much bigger. In fact, during the Cold War, the Russians built this. This is a huge one. For a scale of reference, you can see the small circle area there. Those are small ferries. And this huge craft here is can easily carry a thousand people. So it's huge. So it all seems great. Everything is good. So where's the catch? Well, these are boats, like I said. And boats aren't meant to travel in rough oceans. So it can't cross the Atlantic or go across the Pacific. But neither can it speed boats or yachts. And here's what I propose that, sure, they can't travel through rough oceans, but there are many areas where they can. Consider big lakes, for example, Lake Superior in the United States or Lake Victoria in Africa. These are big lakes. And the thing is, these lakes are located inland, within the continent. And the weather conditions tend to be more forgiving. So there are many such areas, like the Straits around Singapore, Indonesia, rivers, archipelagos. These are very effective. So now let's talk about why the investors here should invest in wind. <clears throat> Firstly, it's a good idea. It's fuel efficient. It's fast. But we've got to talk about the money, right? So these are going to be operationally cheaper than an airplane because the fuel consumption is lesser. And furthermore, the certification costs are lesser because anything that's got to do with a boat is cheaper in terms of certification than that's got to do with an airplane. Now, it's, the wind crafts are also good for the environment. Every year in fresh waters, countless animals get hurt or even killed because they come in contact with the propellers of the boats. A wind craft has no propeller in the water. It's flying over the surface of the water for most of its time. And this minimizes the impact it has on the marine ecology. Furthermore, a wick craft is more fuel efficient and hence has a lower carbon footprint and it doesn't contaminate the water. What do I mean by water contamination? Normal boats, they take water from the river, cool their engine and throw it back into the river. This means it's hotter and it also has contaminants in it. Whereas a wick craft has something like a car engine. It just uses the air around it to cool it. So it minimizes the impact on the, on the marine environment. With this, I would like to urge you to invest your resources, the engineers and students here, to research into this field, and the investors to give it your resources so that we can take this forward. Because I believe with a little push, this technology can really take off. Here are my references. Any questions? Yes, What's the capacity of the, of the, of the Weakness. The one that you saw in the video? Um, and then what's the average capacity of the... Because uh, as people travel from Singapore to Batam, there's a lot of, like, a lot of travelers. So right. um, how, what's the average capacity that one boat can hold? So, so currently these boats, that the research has been going on in this area, is to focus on a smaller size boats. So on average this can carry only about 20 to 40 people. So this is small as compared to a ferry where you can have like hundreds of people. But the focus right now is to promote these to uh, resorts, for example, when uh, high-end resorts, which would want people who want more, more comfortable travel. That's the sector we are focusing on right now. But like I said, it can be scaled up, but there are some complications with it, which are still being addressed. Yes? Uh, you explained that the boat can fly it due to the force between the flag. So if you can fly on the ocean, can you fly on the land? No. The thing is, these boats are designed such that they have only a limited amount of lift. Which means that these boats are not designed to fly far from the surface. 
once they go far away from the surface, this additional effect of the squeezing effect that I mentioned is no longer present, and this makes them inefficient once they take off. So these are primarily meant for flat surfaces, and ideally the water surface. Because it's easy to land, it's safer in the water. It could technically move on the land, but it's not that safe on land. Yes? Uh, in Singapore, there are a lot of big ships or cargoes around the island. So is it able, is the ship, uh, the weight the able to avoid them effectively? That's a very good question because the region around Singapore is actually very densely populated with trade routes and uh, a lot of ports, etc. And the good thing is, these big crafts, another reason why I'm focusing on smaller big crafts the following reason, that they're very maneuverable when it comes to uh, going across the sea. Furthermore, the fact that there's only a short clearance above the water means that in the case of some emergency, like there's something that was unforeseen and there's a, something, there's a, a ship blocking a route, it can easily land in the water and then wait for the uh, thing to pass over. Yes? Does this seem to be very noisy to the surrounding? To the what, sorry? Um, surrounding. Very no. Uh, in, in, the simple fact is, these are going to be about as noisy as your normal speedboat. So, yes, it's going to be noisy, but it's not going to cause an additional problem that wasn't already <coughs> present. And, yes, it does not solve the problem either. It doesn't make it quieter. Any more questions? Alright, I hope you take your time to read through things about the rig. It's pretty interesting. Thank you.